Since 2005, the Minnesota Department of Transportation has been installing high-tension cable median barrier along the state's highways and freeways. The main purpose of the cables is to prevent cross-median head-on crashes, some of the worst that a responder may be faced with. The cable is designed to absorb the energy of an impact while preventing the striking vehicle from hitting oncoming traffic. In the decades since the cables have been installed, there have been literally thousands of hits. Not every one of these would have been a crossover, and not every one of those would have been a head-on, but some would have. Of the thousands of cable hits, a small number have resulted in the vehicle itself being struck in the cable, resulting in additional work for the towing and recovery service. A handful of these hits have resulted in the cable wrapping on both sides of the vehicle, preventing the occupant from opening a door to exit. The chances that you and your crew will have a vehicle entangled in the cable with both doors trapped and an injured occupant requiring extrication is unlikely. But like most training, we cover the worst case just in case. There are a few different cable barrier systems certified for use on Minnesota state highways. The basic design of these systems is very similar, but there are a few differences that you'll need to know for each one. We'll get into the specifics of each in a few more minutes, but here's some common features on all high-tension cable systems. Generally, most cable runs will be about one mile long. There can be shorter sections if needed for the road and geography, and there may be some longer sections, especially in older installations. At each end of a run will be a large anchor buried underground with some exposed hardware to attach the cable to. This can be a single concrete block, or it can be several poured concrete posts, one for each cable. Part of the design allows for the system to drop tension in case a vehicle strikes this point where the cable rises from the ground to prevent vehicles from riding up and over and becoming airborne. On some systems, this design can also be used by responders in life or death situations to release the system tension. Also underground are the post socket sleeves. On older sections, this will be a concrete cylinder with a metal sleeve inside. Newer installations will have a metal socket sleeve that is driven into the ground during the installation. These socket sleeves hold the cable line posts in place. The line posts hold the cable up and on most systems maintain the tension on the cable by pushing it slightly out of center line. The posts are designed to shear off when hit by a vehicle, helping to absorb some of the energy and also directing the tension along the cable lengths and as the posts shear off, releasing tension on the cable. On the Bryphon and Gibraltar systems, for each post that is removed or sheared off, a small amount of tension is released on the cable. On all systems, an impact against the cable is more forgiving than hitting a concrete barrier and has a much more gradual deceleration. For most installations, the posts will be spaced 10 feet apart. The height of the cable on a post is designed to best capture many different vehicle types and sizes, everything from a small compact car up to a full-size SUV. Note that the cable order doesn't change vertically from end to end. The top cable will be the same top cable on one end as it is on the other end. Same with the other cables. The cable itself is pre-stretched, three-quarter inch thick, stranded steel rope. It's designed to last many years and absorb many, many hits, with the only repair needed being the replacement of the posts that have been sheared off. Systems installed in Minnesota after about 2010 will have four cables, while a few older systems will have three cables. Joining the lengths of cable together are turnbuckles. Along with connecting the sections of cable together, the turnbuckles are used to fine-tune the tension on the system when it's installed and for routine maintenance. These turnbuckles can be an open style or a closed style, but the purpose is the same. Because we can't easily re-splice cable that has been cut, we ask that you don't cut the cable itself except in a life or death circumstance. Instead, please cut the turnbuckle on the cable that you need removed. A cut turnbuckle is something MnDOT can repair reasonably promptly with a local shop crew. Replacing a cut cable, however, could take weeks or even months to get the special equipment brought in to repair it. We'll get into more specifics on cutting the turnbuckle in a few more minutes. Always assume that a run of cable is tensioned. The amount of tension can vary depending on the air temperature, from under 3,000 pounds to over 8,000 pounds. Higher temperatures will cause the cable to expand slightly, resulting in a lower tension, while a cold January morning will stiffen and contract the metal, causing a higher tension. An important thing to remember is that if a vehicle has pulled the cable far out of center line, or if it's actually leaning against the cable, the tension will be considerably higher. 
Always do a 360 and visualize where the cable is being pulled and what forces are in play. This also includes if the cable is being pulled upwards. Use caution and make sure everyone at the scene is aware of where the cable is being pulled and where it may snap back to if released. It's important to know which manufacturer's type of cable barrier system you have in your area. MnDOT limits the number of system types installed in each district in order to simplify training and stockpiling of replacement parts, so you'll probably only have to deal with one type. However, if you cover a long stretch of highway or have multiple highways intersecting in your response area or your mutual aid area, you may have more than one. When you're out in your routine driving, make a point to look for the cable barrier and identify what you have in your area. Share this with your partners and crews since there are some differences in extrication tactics between the systems. The Gibraltar System The Gibraltar System has an open C-section post with a hooked hairpin to hold the cables in place. All three or four cables slalom together alternating front to back per post. The Bryphon System the Bryphon system has a Z-shaped post where the top cable rests in a groove at the top of the post. The remaining cables weave between the posts. The small black plastic pegs help keep the cable at the right height. The Trinity system. The Trinity system has an I-shaped post with the top two cables running in an open slot at the top. The cables are separated by a plastic spacer. The bottom two cables are held up by small J-hooks. Overall, issues with vehicles in the cable barrier are rare. The most common complication is that the vehicle has gotten a cable wrapped around a wheel or is straddling on top of the cable. If the vehicle has pulled the cable out of line, causing tension, use the tow truck to pull the vehicle back to center line, which should relieve some tension and help with untangling. Generally, the best approach is for the tower to pull the vehicle out from the side it entered from. If the cable is tied up by a semi-truck or can't be untangled through the usual means, contact MnDOT via State Patrol to request a crew to respond. As soon as you've completed your size up in 360, if you find that you have a patient that cannot be extricated due to the cable barrier, contact MnDOT via State Patrol Dispatch immediately and advise them of the situation. Request an ETA on MnDOT's response and use that information along with your assessment of the patient's status to guide your extrication plan. Tactics in green are the first choice and shouldn't cause any additional damage to the cable barrier system other than what happened in the crash. Use the tow to drag the vehicle back to center line or use the boom to lift the vehicle up and off the cable or post. Tactics in orange will have some impact on the barrier's effectiveness, but still leave it in place. This includes gradually releasing tension by pulling or cutting line posts or cutting a single turnbuckle to release a cable. Tactics in red will immediately drop system tension, but cannot easily be repaired, resulting in the cable being out of service for some time and not able to protect against future crossovers until it's repaired. This includes knocking down the end anchor posts on the Trinity and Gibraltar systems. We ask that you not cut the cable itself unless it's a life or death situation and there are no other options. Please cut a turnbuckle instead. If MnDOT isn't available and you're forced to go hands-on with the cable barrier, be sure to notify MnDOT via State Patrol Dispatch so we know and can start planning for repair. For all responses involving the cable barrier system, always do a full 360 and make a note on where the cable is being pulled from and where it will go if released. Make sure everyone at the scene is aware of the danger areas. Tension on the Gibraltar and Bryphon system can be gradually released by removing posts. Starting from the first undamaged post at your scene, pace back 11 posts. From here, work away from the scene, leaving a minimum buffer of 10 undamaged posts between your work area and the scene. This buffer of undamaged posts will help guide and direct the cable and help keep it within the center line of the system. Depending on the system temperature and overall tension, removing about a dozen posts on the Bryphon and Gibraltar systems could give you enough slack to move it off a blocked door. Before making the cut, look carefully what forces and directions the cable is pushing against the post. Either jaws or a chop saw can be used to cut the post. Do not cut the post flush with the ground. Please leave enough exposed so our maintenance crews have something to grab onto for repair. And use care not to cut or damage the cable. Cutting a turnbuckle will immediately drop tension on that cable. Please only cut the minimum number needed. Any cables left in place are better than nothing in preventing the next crash. A chop or K-saw and a gradual slow cut is preferred over using a hydraulic or a JAWS type tool and an abrupt cut. 
we found that diamond blades cause chattering and vibration when cutting. A regular abrasive blade is the best choice in the saw. When the cable is released, it will retract very quickly and with a great amount of energy, depending on how much tension there is on the system. It will generally retract straight back, but could whip out, so keep all personnel away from the cable before releasing. Our experience has been that the retraction distance will be about 10 to 30 feet in each direction under normal tension, which is about one to three post distance spaces. But if the cable is being pulled considerably out of alignment or it has the weight of a vehicle pushing on it, the retraction could be further. Cut the turnbuckle straight down the middle and try to avoid cutting the threads. For life or death situations, if the turnbuckle isn't accessible and cutting the cable is the only option, remember that it will unravel with protruding sharp wires. Be sure to wear all protective gear, including face and hand protection, as well as covering the arms and legs. Another option for instance involving the Gibraltar or Trinity systems is to knock down the anchor release post. This drops tension on the entire system, which makes it a good tactic for life or death situations. However, it is extremely time consuming to repair, especially during winter months. And since the entire system is down, there is no protection for vehicles until it is repaired. MinDOT asks that you only use this technique for life or death extrication scenarios, unless you've been told otherwise by your local MinDOT shop. On both Gibraltar and Trinity systems, the cable end is attached to the anchor block in an open channel. When a vehicle strikes the cable release post, the bottom acts like a lever, pushing the cable out of the channel and releasing it from the anchor. The Gibraltar system has a single attachment point, while the Trinity system has four separate ones, one for each cable. This option does not apply on the Bryphon system. For crashes where the vehicle is on top of the end anchor post and the cable system is still on, under tension, use additional caution. Contact a MinDOT response as soon as possible. This video from Rock County, Wisconsin demonstrates using a squad car to release the anchor. Position the bumper of a squad or fire vehicle against the cable release post and carefully drive forward pushing the post down. This will lever the cables out of the slot and drop the system. Experience shows in this demonstration was that one of the cables didn't release. However, that's not always the case. The Trinity system is a slightly different design, but the concept is the same. Thank you everyone for your time and good luck. Please contact your local MnDOT maintenance office for follow-up questions.